with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. You know, every day we have to make choices. Life is choices. Every day we have to make decisions. We have to decide what's right, what's wrong. We have to decide what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. And, you know, sometimes we just don't know. We don't know what to do. And that's what I want to talk with you about to, tonight. I want to talk to you about uh, just a, a phrase that's in the Bible, in this book of Romans, that is so important. It's so important as you face these choices and these decisions and what you're going to believe. Look with me in Romans chapter 4, and I'm going to begin with verse 1. And the Bible says, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? In other words, what has Abraham discovered? What has he discovered? For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all glory. God, you have blessed us so much. You've met our needs, and Father, Lord, you've watched over us. God, you gave us your Son, your own Son, that we might have eternal, everlasting life. And Lord, we just praise you tonight. And God, we look to you for your wisdom, for your guidance, as Lord, we live these lives pray, Father, that you'll use these words tonight. And God, Lord, that you'll embed them in our hearts, that God, we might, Lord, go out and, Lord, be more pleasing to thee. Walk in that which is right. Do that which is right. Believe that which is right. Glorify thy Son tonight, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. I want to draw your attention to verse 3. For what saith the Scripture? For what saith the Scripture? Folks, the book of Romans was written by Paul, of course. It was written to the church at Rome, a church that was made up mostly of Gentiles. But, beloved, there were also believing Jews that were in that church. Now, those Jews had heard the gospel, and they, beloved, had received Christ, had believed on Jesus. They were in the church. But, beloved, they were having a problem. I mean a real problem. You see, all their lives as Jews, they had been taught to keep the law. They had been taught, beloved, if you want to be right with God, you keep the law. But now, along comes the gospel. And the gospel says salvation isn't by works, isn't by keeping the law, it's by faith in Christ. And beloved, as you can imagine, they were confused. They were confused. They, th these Jewish believers didn't know what was right. They didn't know, beloved, what was true. They didn't know what to believe. So, Paul, beloved, at the beginning of, of, of the book of Romans, attempts to prove that salvation is by faith. And, and that it's always, listen, it's always been by faith, not by the law. So in chapter 4, he uses somebody, beloved, that every Jew loved, every Jew uh, admired. He used Abraham. Father Abraham. And he says, 
What did Abraham, our father by the flesh, what did he discover? And in verse 3 he tells us, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham was saved, beloved. He was found righteous by faith, by believing God, by believing God. So how do you know that, preacher? How, how, I mean, how, how, how do you know uh, that, that, that Paul? How do you know that? Look at what Paul refers to, beloved, for confirmation. Look at verse 3. For what saith the Scripture? The Scriptures. That's how Paul knew it. And beloved, that's what he's conveying to these Jews. For what saith the Scripture? Folks, he's referring them to the Scripture. These Jews, beloved, didn't know what to believe. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know, beloved, what to put their faith in. Paul says, what saith the Scripture? What saith? The scriptures. I'm going to tell you, you can't have any better, better advice than that. Ask yourself, what says the scripture? Beloved, in other words, let the scripture tell you what to do. Let the scripture, beloved, tell you what to believe. Let the scripture tell you what to choose. What saith the scripture? Folks, many times as we live this life, we are faced with choices. We are faced, beloved, with what, what's right or what's wrong. Many times, beloved, we're, we're faced with decisions. What should I do? What should I not do? What, what, what should I believe? What should I not believe? Where, where should we look for the answer? Should we look, beloved, at human reasoning? You know, human reasoning is marred. Now, you may think you're very smart, but I'm going to tell you something. All of us, beloved, are born in sin of sin. And sin, beloved, has marred our understanding, our thinking. You're going to trust human, human reasoning. Should you look, beloved, at logic or to logic? Man. You, have you looked around lately? The world's losing everything logical, beloved. What they're, what they're saying and doing defies logic. You're going to look to logic. Should, should we look, beloved, to our feelings? And that's, that's what so many people look to. When they have decisions or they have choices or are or, or they trying to figure what's right, they go by feeling. I don't know how many times. I have talked to people about the Lord, you know, and, and, and tell them that, you know, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're a sinner. And Jesus died and rose again that you might have a life everlasting if you will believe on him. And I've heard them say so many times, well, preacher, I feel, I feel like I'm a pretty good person. I've heard them say, Oh, well, I, I, you know, preacher, I, I, I feel if I'm a, a good enough that I'll get to heaven anyway without accepting Christ. They go by their feelings. Let me tell you something. Your feelings change like the seasons, friend. You can't depend on it. See, none of these, beloved, are reliable. Now, listen, we should look to the Scriptures. Listen, if you want to know what's right and wrong, beloved, if you want to know what's right to believe, what's right to do, what's right to trust, uh, 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 ask yourself, what saith the Scriptures? What saith the Scriptures? Why should, why should we look to the Scriptures? Because, beloved, of what they are. They, you know what the Scriptures are? Beloved, they are the Word of God. Amen? Let that sink in. They are the Word of God Almighty. Folks, it's not the Word of men. It's the Word of God. Men, beloved, are sinful and depraved. It's the Word of the, of the 
Christ's holy God, beloved, that we hold in our hands. And as God, beloved, is true and perfect, let me tell you, beloved, the scriptures are true and perfect. They are perfect. It's not the word of lying politicians. It's not the word, beloved, of some deceived professor in some university. It's not, beloved, the word of, of, of some corrupt uh, scientist or sinful uh, counselor or, or greedy lawyers. Now listen, it is the word, beloved, of the pure one, of the righteous one, of the true one, of the all-knowing one, the one called true and faithful. It's his word. It's his word. Folks, he won't lie to you. And all these others I've named will lie to you. They'll lie to you. He won't, listen, he can't lie to you. You know why? Because if God lied, beloved, he would cease to be God. And if he ceased to be God, beloved, this universe would just fly apart. Because it's God that created, it's God that holds it all together. You look at what the Bible says. Beloved, that in Jesus all things consist. Beloved, he holds it together. And if God would lie, beloved, it would just dissolve. Folks, the quality of good counsel, listen to me, is measured by what the counselor knows. Guess what? You don't know everything. There goes human reasoning. Beloved, the, the politicians don't know everything. Beloved, the, the scientists don't know everything. If you think they do, you go and check the science books. They, that, beloved, a science book that was written 10 years ago is out of date. Scientists don't know everything. Boy, boy, we believe in them. Got news for you. Your friends don't know everything. They don't know everything. Your family don't know everything. Your preacher don't know everything. Ignore that part, Martha. Your preacher don't know everything. So any counsel given by them, listen to me, is limited. Is limited. Oh, but there is a God in heaven who is omniscient, who knows everything about everything, beloved. He knows, beloved, your, you inside and out. He knows what's good and right. He knows, beloved, what the future will bring in your life. He knows. He knows. And because he knows all, Beloved, he shares his counsel with us in his word, in the scriptures, in the scriptures. So whose word are you going to follow? Are you going to follow man's? Or are you going to follow God's? I'm going to tell you, if you follow man's, you are so foolish. You are so foolish. Good counsel is based, beloved, on how the counselor feels toward you, toward you. Does he care about you? Does you think the politicians care about you? You think, hey, let me, the, the world don't care about you. The politicians don't care about, they care about your vote. But y'all saw what our president did. Been over a year. And he goes to, what, East Palestine, they call it? A year, over a year after. Beloved, they have that disaster. And I heard them talking to the people. They said, this is Paul. He don't care about us. He don't care about us. But he cares now because election's coming Y'all y'all can y'all can get mad with me or whatever. If you're a Biden man, I'm sorry. But that's the way politicians work. They don't care. They don't care. But beloved God loved you so much that he gave his son to die for you. 
He will not, he will not, beloved, uh, 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 lead you wrong. He won't do it. He won't. He cares about you. Good counsel is based upon the character of the one who gives it. Beloved, man's word is no better than his character. Than his character. Oh, but let me tell you. The character of God is undefiled. The character of God is perfect. So guess what? His word is perfect. Beloved, his, his, the scriptures are perfect. And God has given us his perfect word in the scriptures. In the scriptures. So don't it make sense? Don't it make sense when you have a decision to make or when you don't know which way to go or, beloved, when you don't know what to believe or what to do? Don't it make sense, beloved, as those, uh, as those Jews were in Rome, beloved? Don't it make sense to ask what saith the Scriptures? If you will do that, it will stop so much trouble and so many trials in your life. What saith the Scriptures? Why should we look at Scriptures for answers? Because it's the Word of God, of God. Why should we look to the Scriptures? Because, beloved, of the evil one who fights against us, who fights against us. Folks, God tells us that we have an adversary. You have an adversary. And in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, it says this, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. God has told us, God has warned us, there is a supernatural being out there that wants to devour you. And guess, guess what he's called? He's called the deceiver, the deceiver. He deceives, beloved. And folks, that's what was happening to those Jews uh, here in, in Rome. Beloved, they, 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 did, they didn't, they, excuse me, the devil was seeking to devour them, to destroy them. He wanted them to believe that they could be saved by the work by their works, not by faith in Jesus. And if they had swallowed that deception, they would have died and went to hell. They would have died. Oh, let me tell you, there's a lot of Christians out there that ain't got this thing settled in their hands. They they still think, beloved, they are saved by their works plus Jesus. But you are saved by Jesus plus nothing. Plus nothing. He was seeking to devour them. He, he wanted them to believe that they could be saved by keeping the law, by, by their works, by their works. That's what the devil does. He deceives. Over their lifetime, now get this, over their lifetime, they had been fed this that these lies. Beloved, uh, he, you know, the Bible tells us he's the father of lies. And he used their, their leaders, their religious leaders, their teachers, their mothers, their fathers. They had been fed this lie, beloved, that, that works would save them, that keeping the law would save them. And those, law, those lies had become so embedded in their hearts and their minds that, beloved, they could not shake it. They could not shake it. They were confused. They, they didn't know what was true. They didn't know if they should trust in their works or if they should trust in Christ. Oh, but Paul, Paul, he dispelled, beloved, all the lies that chained them with just a few words. He said, what? saith the scriptures. What say, you want the truth. You want to know. 
What says the scriptures? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Doesn't say Abraham kept the law. In fact, there wasn't that, uh, the Mosaic law then, but the Noahide law. He destroyed it. Folks, the scriptures told them what was right. The scriptures told them, beloved, what decision they should make on this thing. The the scriptures told them what they should do. They should trust in Jesus, believe in God, and that would be counted to them for righteousness. Folks, that same devil is out to devour you and devour your family. He's out, beloved, to lie to you, to deceive you. Christian, Ephesians says, the book of Ephesians says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. Beloved, the deceiver is in that high place, and oh, he's deceiving, beloved. He's trying to destroy Christians. I'm going to probably make somebody upset now. Here we go. No one, no one should be believing evolution. No one, no one, especially a Christian. Because, beloved, why not, preacher? Hey, preacher, you know, science says that evolution is true. That's what the professors in the universities are saying. That's what, that's what the textbooks are saying. Why shouldn't we believe in evolution? Tell me something. What saith the scriptures? What saith the scriptures? Scriptures say, doesn't say a word about evolution. Doesn't say we started, beloved, as tadpoles somewhere and we developed over billions and billions of years. doesn't say that. It says, beloved, that God, man was created on the sixth day by God, created in the image of God, that God spake, and everything was created. What saith the Scripture? What saith the Scripture? The same, the the Scriptures destroy Evolution, and I'm going to tell you something else. If you'll get into evolution, beloved, if you will get in and look at it from a a, a logical perspective, evolution destroys itself. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy. No one should believe be believing that. I I knew a fellow several years ago, and his mama was a devout Christian. But she believed in evolution. Or she said she was a Christian. But she believed in theistic evolution. You know what that is? It's a lie. That's what it is. It's deception by the devil. That God created everything, but he used billions of years. Seven days, folks. And on the seventh day, he rested. That's what the scriptures say. No one should believe, be believing that homosexuality is all right. No one should be believing that, especially Christians. What saith the Scripture? That it is an abomination to the Lord. And you know what? If you've got that much common sense, you know it's an abomination. You know it's not right. You know it's sin. But oh, so many are being deceived by the devil. I'm talking about in the churches. In the churches. Andy Stanley. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Andy Stanley. Beloved openly promotes homosexuality. Homosexuality. What about the scriptures? What does the scripture say? Oh, but his human reasoning says, which, by the way, is marred by sin, 
his human reason. He said, well, you know, love is such a wonderful thing. That type of love makes God sick. It makes God sick. Because it goes against what God intended. It's sin. It's sin. Why are they deceived? Because they have left the clear teaching of Scripture. Folks, all we're seeing today, evolution, homosexuality, this gender confusion, nonsense that we're hearing, beloved, on every side, all this wokeness is because people have gotten away from what saith the Scriptures. The Scriptures. That's the problem with our nation. There was a time when, beloved, this nation went by what saith the Scriptures, but not anymore. And that's the reason we're in the mess we're in. Listen, if you don't want to be deceived by the devil, know what the Scriptures say and hide the Scripture in your heart. Know what it says and hide Scripture in your heart. That gets back. You know why we have Sunday school? Where's my stand up, Mr. Superintendent? This man is trying to build our Sunday school. And beloved, why is he working so hard? Because he knows, beloved, that we need to have that scripture in our heart. In our heart. So we can pull it out whenever, beloved, we are confronted with wrong. Thank you, brother. Got tired of standing, didn't you? Why do we have Wednesday night? For you to learn the scripture and to hide it in your heart. Hide it in your heart. Because the devil's out there trying to deceive you. The other day, I was watching a YouTube. It was a, a, a YouTube by a man that I had watched, I don't know, maybe ten times. And I liked him. I never heard him say anything that was wrong. And I, I really liked the guy. And I saw the this YouTube by him, and I clicked on it. And he was interviewing a man who had written a book. And he told the man, he said, uh, you've written this book. He said, tell, tell us your story. And the guy started talking. And this is, this is what he said. He said, I was raised in an evangelical church. I was raised to believe the Bible. He said, but, but one day a friend came by and told me what was really going on. Now, when he said that, it hit me wrong. A friend. Not, you're not getting this from the Scripture. You're getting this from a friend. What did I say a while ago? Your friends don't know everything. And so, I mean, when he said that, red flags went up. Because we should, we should do and be and, and, and believe what the Scriptures say, not what some friend tells us. And so, beloved, he, he went on and he said, just a few more words, and I knew he was of the devil. I knew it. Here's what he said. He said, a man, I, I came along, a friend, and he showed me what, he told me what was going on. And he said, I, when I heard what was going on, I was so afraid. I was fearful. And he emphasized, he said, I was terrified. That's it, God. This is not of you because God is not the author of fear. See, that's, that's in my heart, beloved. Perfect love casteth out fear. Amen? And so I, I, knew, I, I, I stopped it. I said, Lord, 
this is not of you. I don't know where this guy's going with this, but this is not of you. And I'll turn it back on because I wanted, I wanted to, because this guy who was hosting this thing, I had listened to him before. I liked him. And so I want to know where he was going. He kept talking, kept talking, kept talking, kept talking, kept talking. And I'm not going to tell you all he said, but I'll tell you this. He was building straw men. You know what a straw man is. It's not a real thing. He was building straw men, and him and this guy I liked was tearing them down. And, beloved, he lied all the way through. You say, what kind of straw? He was building straw men of you and me. He was saying things, beloved, that you and I are not guilty of. And he was tearing them down. And this guy I liked was helping him. And I went on. He went on. And finally at the end, he said, the pillars, the seven pillars. And I said, oh, I know what you're doing. It was dominion theology. Dominion theology. The new apostolic reformation stuff. Beloved, it's trash. It's trash. And beloved, it was all a lie. And I, I, I listened to this stuff. And beloved, I, I said, I, I, I cut it off. And I said, Lord, how many Christians heard this and have been led astray? By dominion theology. Where if they had the scripture in their heart, the devil would never got his foot in. He would have never got his foot in. I, I wish I had time to go into dominion theology, but I don't. But beloved, this is the way the devil works. Oh, listen, what he said sounded good. If you didn't know what the Scripture said, what the Scripture said. Folks, the Scripture tells us that in the last days, that, beloved, that they will be marked by deception. And let me tell you, it is happening. It is happening. And so many are being deceived, falling away from the faith. You should ask, what saith the Scripture? Because of the devil that is against you. What saith the Scripture? You should ask, what saith the Scripture? Because the Scriptures, listen to me, are always relevant. Do you know there are people who disregard, ignore this book, because it was written so long ago. Let me tell you something, friend. A lot of young people do this, and I, I'm not knocking you. A lot of old people do it. Oh, well, you know, these are modern times. We, 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 you know, things have changed. Let me tell you something. The Bible is always, the Scriptures are always relevant. Always. Always. Uh, beloved, I mean by that the scriptures are ageless. They are ageless. The Bible says thy word is forever settled in heaven. Folks, the scriptures were given to us by the eternal God. Therefore, beloved, it's eternal wisdom. It, beloved, is everlasting wisdom. Somebody say amen. It's everlasting. Let me ask you, who can speak better about the beginning than God? Richard Dawkins wasn't there. Bill Nye wasn't there. All these so-called scientists were not there, but God was there. He was there. Who can speak better about the future than God? You know, we got all these prog 
prognosticators who are, who are, I had to stop and get that word right with these teeth. And get, you know, who are, are telling us, oh, this is going to happen. Go, climate change is going to destroy the world and all this. How, listen, beloved, who can speak better about the future than God? He sees the future. He sees it now. Who can speak better about the now than God? You know all this craziness going on? God understands it all. He knows where it's coming from. He knows what's causing it. He knows all about it. He knows the now. Folks, there never was a time when the Word of God was not relevant. And there never will be a time when the Word of God is not relevant. It's relevant when you're 10 years old. It's relevant when you're 16 years old. It's relevant when you're 24 years old. It's relevant when you're 35, when you're 48, when you're 61, when you are 80, beloved. It's still relevant. It's still relevant. Listen, God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. Right and wrong does not change. Truth doesn't change. Despite what they tell us today, truth does not change. Oh, society may change, and it, do, it has. Culture will change, and it has. Science may change, and it does. Clothes and styles may change, but truth, beloved, does not change. The scriptures don't change. They don't change. They don't change. Though men have tried to change the scriptures, they stand forever. forever. By the way, that's one reason we use the King James. One reason. Truth don't change. I personally believe the King James is the best English translation we have. I believe that with all my heart. And I've looked at the others. I've read the others. King James is right on. It's not, I mean, don't misunderstand me. That old English throws us sometimes, amen? But, beloved, it takes a little bit of study. And you got it. You can do most of it with a dictionary. With a dictionary. No matter what time you're in, no matter what situation you face, no matter what circumstances you, beloved, you may find yourself before. Listen, the truth of Scripture is relevant to you. To you. So before you make that choice, before, beloved, you believe that lie, before, beloved, you take that action, Ask yourself, what saith the Scripture? What saith the Scripture? Human reasoning will fail you. It's failed me before. I've gone by human reasoning, and it's failed me. Human reasoning will fail you. Logic, beloved, is disappearing. Feelings will change like the seasons. But the scriptures are, are, beloved, sure and steadfast. Always, always right. Always right. If you want to be right, ask yourself, what saith the scripture? I want you to bow your heads and stand with me if you would. I'm going to tell you, I am so thankful for the Word of God. It, beloved, is a light unto our path. It, it brightens the way. It shows us the way that we should go. A lamp unto our feet as we walk through this life. 
All we got to do is read it and hide it in our hearts. And beloved, I'm going to tell you, your decisions will be right. What you believe will be right. The way you go will be right. You don't want to do, go the wrong way. You don't want to make that wrong decision. You don't want to do the wrong thing. So ask yourself, what saith the Scriptures? What saith the Scriptures? Heavenly Father, we ask you to have your way right now. God, make us all students of thy word. It is so precious. Lord, it's the compass, the only right compass that we have to find our way through this life. Father, I pray, pray, Lord, that God, the, 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 the wonder of thy word will fill our hearts and souls. And God, Lord, that we will always no matter what decision we have to make, no matter, God, what, what uh, they may be trying to make us believe, that, God, we will look at what saith the Scripture. God, I ask you to have your way in this invitation. Maybe someone now is facing the decision. Maybe, Lord, someone wants to come and just praise you and thank you. For giving us thy wisdom in the scripture. I pray, Father, that God, we all might be grateful and thankful to you for that. So, Father, have your way in this invitation. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we invite you to come.